What up, Wolfpack? It's your boy, Mark, back to give another reaction video. Today, we are getting into a video titled Racism and Cultural Appropriation in K-Pop. I've had this video requested to me a lot. I get it. I get that everybody wants to know what the black guy thinks about this video. So, we're gonna do it. We'll see what's talked about and discussed in this video. I have had similar conversations on my Discord server. If you're a patron of mine, you have access to my Discord server. We're on there all the time talking about a bunch of stuff. And this conversation has been brought up. I do know some of the situations that have gone on and some of the scandals and issues or whatever, but I don't know too much of it as I haven't been a K-pop fan that long. So I'll probably learn some new situations and I'll probably have some opinions. So this will be interesting. Definitely make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we're gonna get into this video and see what they have for us. I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey you guys. Today I'm going to be talking about a pretty sensitive topic. I'm going to be addressing racism and cultural appropriation in the K-pop industry. I debated making this video for a long time because it's something that's often ignored and swept under the rug in the K-pop community. But at the same time, it's been bugging me for the longest time. And I feel that as a person of color and someone with a platform, it's my job to talk about it and educate people on it. I'll start by addressing the two big issues that have been going around lately. Number one, cultural appropriation. And since a lot of people don't fully understand what cultural appropriation is or why it's bad, I'll explain quickly. Cultural appropriation is when someone uses elements of a culture, usually belonging to a minority, without understanding the cultural significance. It's taking parts of a culture and using it for fashion slash aesthetic purposes. An example being American sports teams using names like the Indians or Redskins, and using logos of Native American chief addresses. So why is cultural appropriation bad? Cultural appropriation is bad because it turns the culture that's being appropriated into a mockery or trend. Cultural appropriation is not showing respect or appreciating the culture. It's making the culture and the people the culture belongs to into a decoration or fad. And oftentimes it creates vicious and harmful stereotypes about the people whose culture is being appropriated. Number two, the amount of anti-blackness that surrounds the K-pop industry and the fandom. I'll be discussing this later on in the video so I won't touch on it right now. On to how this relates to K-pop. There is an endless list of idols and groups who've appropriated different cultures. For example, G-Idol, Super Junior, and a lot more. And I won't give any more examples because I don't want to get murdered. The way some of these idols so openly mock other cultures is shocking and sad. For international fans like myself, it can be extremely disheartening and hurtful to see idols disappear. Okay, so, uh, so far nothing I've seen has been, like, seen in the video has struck me as appropriation of, of any culture. Suits are universal and so are short shorts. But I will say that I do understand that not everyone understands where the line between appreciation and appropriation is. And I'm not going to act like just because I'm black. I'm qualified to say where that line is, and that line is different for everyone. I don't think that it is bad to appreciate a culture. I do think that it, you have to be very careful incorporating other cultures that are not your own into anything, because anytime you're doing that, you run the risk of potentially upsetting or hurting some people, specifically the people of said culture. I personally hate when people are offended on behalf of other people. In the hypersensitive society that we live in in the West, we've gotten to a point where this happens quite a bit, where some people are upset and they're not a part of the group of people who should be upset. For example, be like me being upset for Korean people being culturally appropriated. Now, I can say that's wrong, but I should not be more vocal about it than who is being appropriated from. That is their discussion to have, and I should not be making that about me by inserting myself into that. This person started off with saying that they're a person of color, so I'm not talking about them. I'm just talking about a general uh, uh, trend that I'm seeing of people being offended for other people. We should not strive to speak on behalf of other people. 
adults respect your culture so openly, and a majority of the time these idols are never called out for it. People simply sweep it under the rug and pretend like it never happened. As for anti-blackness, I am a black K-pop stan, and some of the shit I've seen idols do has genuinely disappointed me. There is so much anti-blackness in the K-pop industry, there are so many idols who've participated in blackface, and other things meant to mock black people and our culture, hell. We've seen plenty of idols insult darker-skinned Koreans by comparing them to black people. Yet despite all the anti-blackness that exists in K-pop, the industry literally wouldn't function without us. So much of the music and trends are based off of black culture. Hell every single group has at least one rapper, and rap wouldn't exist without black people. The K-pop industry hates black people so much, yet arguably gets the majority of their trends from us. So, uh... Oof, how do, how do I go about this part of the video? The, I mean, this this is true. This We, as a people, not me, obviously, I wasn't around for it, but we as a people, black people, did create rap. We, we created a lot of other genres, by the way. Most popular modern genres, if you go back through the history, black people were very much involved in that, whether you realize it or not, like, even genres that we today aren't associated with, like rock and jazz and like not just the things that people think, oh, R&B music, black, rap, black. Like we, we were instrumental in the creation and shaping of a lot of different musical genres for a long time, specifically in the West. That was really our only avenue, even during the, the darkest of and and dark is a, it's a weird phrase to use for this video but even during the most racially charged times that was the one avenue that we had entertainment when you think of music in the west whether you realize it or not we have influenced a lot of it and that music has gone on to influence things in the east like k-pop and so we as black people are very aware that the k-pop industry has taken a lot of inspiration from us but does not necessarily like us. That's not to say that all idols or all Koreans or all Asians or all whatever, anytime you put a blanket statement on anything, you'll be wrong. It's an interesting place to be in, especially when you are a fan of the product of said inspiration, like me, myself, being black and being a fan of K-pop, uh, the K-pop that I have come across. It's good, it's quality music, quality videos, quality dancing, etc. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It would be the equivalent of um, anti-Asian people doing Taekwondo or something of that nature. There is a trend of anti-blackness that stems really deep. It's a, it's a whole colorism thing. But there also is a trend of our ethos being present in a lot of the music, visuals, hairstyles, fashion styles, etc. And so I believe that if that is to continue, if they are going to continue to be inspired by us, which they will, because I don't think that the intent was to be inspired by black people specifically, but just to be inspired by the West. And in the West, we inspire the people who are inspiring them. It's a whole other conversation. It is going to be imperative for them as they continue to expand to the West and continue to do things that have been influenced by our culture that they arm themselves with the necessary knowledge and nuance in these situations so they aren't continuously attacked and dragged because again i know that it is very important for them to continue to expand their influence and therefore their money as they do that they will continue to run into these situations if they do not educate themselves make it make sense and as for anti-blackness among the fandom, some of y'all really need to say you just hate black people and go. I won't get into specifics but some of the things I've seen y'all say about black people and black culture makes me genuinely sick. And I'd honestly think that K-pop stands would be more informed about racism. But some of y'all are worse than locals. Like I said previously, racism and cultural appropriation is almost never actually talked about. And when it is it's usually to make excuses. The most common excuse when an idol does something problematic is, oh well, they are Korean they couldn't have known that. Like that's supposed to make any sense. Korean people are perfectly capable of being educated on other cultures. 
The fact that people even use being Korean as an excuse for doing something problematic makes me wanna bash my head into a wall. And before you'll start in the comments, no. I don't expect Korean people to know every single thing about every single culture. But what I do expect is that they do their research about what is and isn't a respectful display of someone's culture if they are so hellbent on using it in their songs slash MVS. Okay, so, whew, lot to, lot to unpack there. That is another issue. There's a lot of people on both sides of the fence on this, and I'm very interested to see what people say in the comment section of this video uh, in response to what I'm saying and also in response to the video that I'm watching. That is, I, I understand. I understand when people say uh, they're Korean, they don't know. South Korea is a very homogenous society. They do not have the diversity in their country to have the sort of discussions that are commonplace in the West. We have, in the US specifically, a very diverse population because we are a country of immigrants and Native Americans, people act like they don't exist. They exist, they're still here. But we are a country that is made up of a, a very diverse collective of different kinds of people. And so what that means is we interact a lot and in turn like clash a lot as if you've turned on the news ever, you should be able to see that. And so that, that causes discourse, that causes discussion that leads to enlightenment and education on racial issues like, hey, as a black person, I really dislike when you do X, Y, and Z because it makes me feel this particular way, I would appreciate if you respect me as a person and the culture that I am from, that you would not do those things. And then, you know, once that discussion is had, then that person on the other side of the discussion can say, nah, I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do what I wanna do and suffer with the consequences of that. Or they can choose to, you know, switch their behavior and then I guess suffer the consequences of like having to fit that new perspective into their creation of art and so on and so forth. And so I get that cultural appropriation and the nuances that come with dealing with races that are not your own and bits of culture that come from races that are not your own is not nearly as commonly discussed in Korean culture, if at all in certain situations. I watched the uh, DKDK TV lecture on cultural appropriation that one of them gave i'm not i don't follow dk dk tv i don't remember which of the guys it was but he basically had to break down what cultural appropriation was and then equate it to something that they understood from a korean perspective because they had no frame of reference for it because why would they they're just interacting with each other now in the 21st century the internet can help in those discussions it can help educate people on these particular issues but if they're never running into these situations in their everyday life why would they be looking up things like that? why would if they never met a black person or they've only ever seen black people on tv why would they feel the need to go google even if it's the information is there why would they feel the need to go google how to appropriately represent that culture or what is and is not okay when referring to that culture and so on and so forth. So so I understand that Koreans in general may not be equipped with the necessary experiences and education on racial issues to understand what is and is not okay when doing specific concepts and music videos and whatever. However, with that being said, I do not think that we the fans should let everybody off the hook when these situations come up. I see a lot of people who are not representative of said culture accepting half-baked apologies that weren't meant for them. Like I was saying about before, don't get offended for someone else. Also, don't accept an apology for someone else because it wasn't meant for you. And so there's a lot of, as this video said, things being swept under the rug of, well, they're Korean, how would they know any better? They're not gonna know any better. Well, that's the thing. Idols aren't your average everyday Korean people. These are international stars who 
like literally travel all over the world and they deal with multinational corporations as a part of their job. And I personally feel not that they should just innately know, but they should be trained like literally a part of their idol trainee process, just like they're learning to rap. They should learn not to say nigga in their songs and why it's not okay for them to say nigga in their songs, even though the rapper who they're doing a cover of said nigga 27 times, why is it not okay for me to say that? Like those, those kinds of discussions should be had before they become idols. Now I know that they haven't been. And so now we as a collective community have to teach them those things. And teach is important because a lot of people just want to bash people and not you know, do the necessary conversations that enlighten people and educate people. That's not good either because if you just attack people, that just breeds hatred. That doesn't increase the collective intelligence on the situation because people didn't learn anything. They just know that they did something and a bunch of people attacked them. That that doesn't help the situation and it doesn't stop things from happening in the future. So we need to take opportunities to educate people, but we also, we should put the onus on the labels and the companies that are literally raising these idols in some cases, you know, when they're getting them from 10, 11, 12 years old until the time that they debut at 16, 17, 18. In that process somewhere, these conversations need to be had and these companies have the resources to teach so that they don't run into these issues, so they're not saying and doing problematic things. The issue is that that hasn't happened, and so that is where the, the big change needs to happen, in my opinion. It's an infrastructural issue, because I don't expect every Korean or, or any person of any race at that to know every single nuanced situation about every single culture. However, if you're going to, for example, uh, use a culture in a concept, if you're going to use a culture's influence in your music, if you're going to do a particular video performance, whatever, I do think that there should be research done. There is staff on hand that can do this research to educate themselves to be equipped for these situations. Because at the end of the day, yes, the internet exists, but you also have to know what you don't know. And I don't feel like the idols, it's not that they're not equipped to know that, I just don't think that it's their job when they're not the ones making the decision, okay, we're gonna build a group and half of you are gonna be rappers. Okay, if you're going to do that, if you're going to train these small children to be rappers, train them on all of the nuances that come with the culture that created and popularized this art form. And I'm just using rap because I'm black and I don't want to speak too much on other cultures because again, as I said before, I'm not the person to come and talk about why people shouldn't or should or how in what way people should salsa in their music videos. That's, that's not my place. So I'm Speaking on the things that I do know, that I am educated on, that I have experience on, that are connected to me, my history, my ancestry. If you're going to rap in your songs, make sure you're not mocking black people or black culture. If you're going to include Latin beats in your songs, make sure you're not mocking Latinus or their culture. It's that fucking simple. Like it really isn't that hard to just not be racist. These idols have internet access and they are perfectly capable of looking up what is and isn't offensive to other races slash cultures. Stop treating them like they are incapable of knowing any better. My biggest problem with the K-pop community and how you'll handle racism is that you'll baby these idols and treat them like they are incapable of knowing anything outside of Korea slash East Asia. And okay, wow, again, a lot. It doesn't look like this person is going to actually show any of the instances of cultural appropriation or racism. It just kind of seems like they're ranting over fan cams, which... Okay, we're here now. Let's let's do it. Again, I touched on this earlier. I've seen people say this. Well, well, they have the internet. How could they not know? Well, you have the internet. And there's a bunch of stuff you don't know. And you don't know that you don't know those things until you're told, hey, this exists and you don't know it. My point is that, again, the people who are making these decisions, the people who are saying, hey, we're going to use a Latin beat in this song, are not the idols. It is not. Like, it, we're, it, we're being real. It's, they are not making these decisions. Most idol, most musicians on most record labels, if we're being brutally honest, do not have nearly as much agency as we try to act like they do. 
And so the people who are making these decisions are the people who I feel like this energy needs to be more so directed at than the people who are, well, getting bashed, which is the idols who are just a byproduct of, hey, sing this, say this, hey, do this, whatever. And that's not to baby them. It's just the, the situation is not as black and white as this video seems to be implying it is based on what I know about the situation. And I'm honestly so fucking sick of it. Black, South Asian, and Latino pop stands are constantly seeing our cultures ridiculed and made fun of. Yet we're expected to just suck it up because there's no way a K-pop idol could have known better. Imagine how tired we are. You'll get mad every single time we call out your face for doing something insensitive, rather than getting mad at the actual perpetrator. For fuck's sake, these idols are grown. They have internet access. And if they are going to use parts of our culture, then they are surely able to educate themselves on it. To end this video, I'll say this. I'm not going to tell you all to unstand idols that are guilty of anything I talked about in this video. Hell, I stand some idols with some pretty shady pasts as well. But what I will say is this. Hold your faves accountable. Instead of getting mad at people for being justifiably upset, email the companies of these idols and let them know their actions aren't acceptable or appropriate. There are idols out there who have done problematic things in the past but were called out for it and learned from their mistakes. Which proves that... That's important. That is very, very important. So, again, I touched on this a little bit earlier. I've been talking a lot in this video because this is a very sensitive topic, obviously. So, I, I want to make sure that I'm clear on the points that I have. And I also don't agree with everything in this video. So, that's, that's another thing. I have to, like, work around that and explain where I'm actually coming from. But the important part of this is teaching people. And, and I said that earlier, but I, I want to retouch on that. It is important... To teach people now part of that is saying hey this is wrong and that needs to be okay you need to be able to regardless of how much you support someone be able to say hey what you did was wrong that doesn't make you per se a bad person but you need to do better in the future and this is why and this is how you can do better that's a teaching moment that's educational versus this person is XYZ, blah, 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 blah. They suck, cancel them. Such and such is over party. Like, you know, the, the whole little Twitter. We have a kind of angry mob society at this point where we're, we're going witch hunting for people and we're kind of just looking for opportunities to tear people down. And so as soon as they slip and fall, we jump on them. And that is that doesn't teach people things. In fact, that probably just makes people more hateful because now all these people from this other, you know, culture, race, whatever, are attacking them. And um, that doesn't breed love. But I think that it is very important for us to teach people. The situation does not get better without people learning. And whether they, they should or should not have been taught as a trainee is a whole other discussion. But once something comes up, we collectively, as their fans, need to be able to educate them on why that is not okay. And then they, as the global icons and role models that they are, need to be able to take that in stride and do better in the future. That's really what the important part is. Anyone can make a mistake. It's the repeated mistakes that are the issue. And so, yeah, I'm very pro-discourse, discussion, educating people. That is the whole reason I'm doing this video in the first place. Bibles are capable of educating themselves and growing out of their ignorance. Every day it seems like another idol is doing something racist or culturally insensitive. And that's because so often they get away with it. Nobody calls them out or tells them it's wrong. It's a disservice to both idols and international fans that nobody is trying to educate their faves. But at the same time, this does not apply to groups who have a history of being problematic. I have no sympathy for groups who've been called out multiple times and yet continue to be problematic. I'm all for giving idols a chance to grow and learn, but I don't care about groups that have shown time and time again that they don't give a fuck about racism or cultural appropriation. For example, G-Idol, if you stand groups or any groups like them, after everything they've done then I don't know what to tell you, but you'll have no business defending them or being mad at people who call them out because they had it coming.
Uh, I don't know what happened with G Idol. I have a lot of people who tell me I should react to G Idol. I've reacted to KDA, which has two members of G Idol, Soyeon and uh, I don't. I can't think of the other girl's name. Anyway, there are two members of G Idol in KDA. I don't know what what G Idol did. I've maybe heard one of their songs in passing before. I don't know anything about that situation, so. If you guys want to talk about it in the comment section down below, if you want to educate me on what happened with G-Idol, why this person specifically selected G-Idol. I don't even know if this person is just a G-Idol auntie and just made this video to drag them. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not aware on the situation. I can't speak on that. I just... I don't know. That's all for this video. I hope this was informative and helpful to some of you. This video had been on my mind for a long time and I'm glad I finally posted it. Any hate I see in the comments will be deleted and you will be blocked from my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll try to answer them. I love you guys. Bye. Okay, that was a video. I I said a lot in that video. This video is much longer than I thought it was going to be, so... <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know how much of this I'm going to leave in, what I'm going to cut out. Maybe I might release the whole unedited version on Patreon. You guys are interested I, I don't know but um, that person has some stuff they needed to say so I hope that I hope they feel better um, I was told that there are two parts to this video there's a whole second part to this video so maybe something else happened that set them off I don't know but uh, hopefully you guys understood where I was coming from in this video this video didn't really touch on anybody specifically or any sp specific situation I mean they mentioned G Idol at the end but they also didn't tell me what Giado did, so I don't, I have no reference to like what it is that they're speaking on. So I just spoke based on my experiences being on K pop Twitter for a year and something, and my experiences as a black person watching some of the stuff that has unfolded. But yeah, hopefully this video was entertaining for you guys. Hopefully this was somewhat educational for some of you. I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i not even sure how many people are going to watch this video. I got a bunch of people who recommended it to me, but we'll see. So uh, if you actually stayed all the way through the video and listened to everything that I had to say in this video, let me know in the comment section down below because I'm actually very interested to see how many people actually watched all the way through. But um, yeah, love you guys. I'll see all you guys next time here on the channel. You guys have a great day.